Let's talk about Nash equilibria in normal form games. So first we'll give an intuitive definition of a Nash equilibrium. A set of strategies is a Nash equilibrium if no player can change their strategy, holding the other player's strategies fixed and make him or herself better off. Now when we think about Nash equilibria, there is a most important part to this definition and that is this part right here, the holding the other player's strategies fixed part. Okay, so the question is, can a player make themselves better off if nobody else changes what strategy they're using? And this is what we always mean when we say Nash Equilibrium. It's not specific to a normal form game or a game that's used in neuroeconomics. It's always what the Nash Equilibrium means. Let's talk about what a strategy means. Okay. So a strategy is going to be what action a player takes in a game at every point in the game. So this is an easy concept when we're studying normal form games because there's only one decision to be made. But when we start talking about extensive form games where players might take more than one, um, make more than one decision as part of their strategy, then the idea of um, a Nash equilibrium including every um, move that a player would make during the game becomes really important. For now, it's important to know that there are two types of strategies that we want to consider in normal form games. These are pure strategies and mixed strategies. The idea of a pure strategy is that you play the same thing for certain. There's no randomization, whereas a mixed ra strategy involves randomization. So Nash, who's obviously the person who's famous for coming up with the concept of a Nash equilibrium, showed that every game has at least one mixed strategy equilibrium, but um, the way he defines a mixed strategy equilibrium, you can play the same strategy 100% of the time, which doesn't involve any randomization, but that's what he showed. So you can look at this another way, which is that every game has at least one equilibrium, and whether it's a pure strategy equilibrium or a mixed strategy equilibrium um, depends on the game. So let's look at an example and see how you find um, equilibria of games. So suppose that we're in a situation where we have Jason and Jessica and there's two gourmet ice cream stands in Blacksburg and their owners are trying to figure out what prices to charge. So we have below um, uh, uh, the prices that they can each charge. So Jason's choices are to charge $4 or 450 because he's the, going to be the row player. And Jessica is picking between $4 and $4.50 as well, but she's the column player. So when she chooses, it's going to be a column that, that she chooses. So remember that when we're reading these matrices, the row player's payoff is always going to be the first number in the parentheses, and the column player's payoff is the second number in the parentheses. So if you want to think about um, remembering the payoffs, remember that we're always going to talk about rows payoff, comma, columns payoff. One of the ways I see students most frequently get confused when they're doing, um, finding a Nash equilibrium of a game like this is that they will get the column player's payoff mixed up with the rows player's payoff. So if you're stuck on a problem or you feel yourself getting confused, remember to pay a special attention to whether or not you're looking at the second payoff in each cell of the matrix for the column player and the first payoff for the row player. Okay, let's look at um, how to solve for a Nash equilibrium and there's two ways to do it. The first way that we think of solving for Nash equilibrium is just to look at every possible cell in the table and see whether or not it satisfies the definition of a Nash equilibrium that neither player wants to change their strategy given that the other player is going to hold their strategy fixed. So let's start with 750-250 and ask, is that a Nash equilibrium? No, nope, change my mind. Let's start down here with 700-300. Okay, so the Jason's playing 450 and Jessica's playing 4. Well, if, if we're looking at that possible strategy, could that be a Nash equilibrium? Um, let's look at Jason's situation first. If Jessica's going to continue to pick $4, then Jason says, if I stay here at $450, I make 700 
if I change my strategy to four dollars, I would rather have I would get 750 and I like 750 better than 700 so I want to change so that means that this can't be a Nash equilibrium okay put a little X there let's look at this um, outcome here 750 and 250 well in this case if we look at Jason if Jason changes from 450 to four dollars then he goes from 750 to eight dollars so he would like to do that so that's not a Nash equilibrium we know already but let's look at it from Jessica's point of view if Jason's going to continue to pick 450 then Jessica would like to switch from 250 to 300 because that gives her 50 more so that's definitely not a Nash equilibrium the other possibility is 800 200 could that be a Nash equilibrium well if Jason's getting 800 by using a four dollar strategy and Jessica is using a 450 strategy then Jason cannot make himself better off by switching from four dollars to 450 because if he does he goes from 800 to 750 and that's no good so he doesn't want to change but let's look at Jessica's situation Jessica's picking 450 and getting 200 if she switches to four dollars then she gets 250 so she doesn't like that that's not a Nash equilibrium so we have one more thing that could be a Nash equilibrium. Remember, there may not be an equilibrium in pure strategies, and that's okay. But let's check this four dollar, four dollars. Well, if Jason is is get is choosing four dollars and Jessica's choosing four dollars, Jason's getting seven fifty. If he changes to four fifty, he gets seven hundred. So he's not changing. So far, so good. Let's look at Jessica's situation. If she picks four fifty, four dollars, then she gets two fifty. 250 is bigger than 200 that she would get for switching to 450 so she doesn't want to change so our Nash equilibrium of this game is four dollars for Jason and four dollars for Jessica so that's one way to do it is just to check every cell in the table now there's another way of finding a Nash equilibrium that works some of the time and that has to do with looking for dominant strategies So what we mean by a dominant strategy is a strategy that you always want to choose no matter what the other guy chooses. And in this game, players have dominant strategies. So if you look at Jason's situation, Jason said, can do a little thought experiment and say, if Jessica picks $4, what would I like to do? If Jessica picks $4, then I would rather pick $4 because $750 is better than $700. So I'm going to pick... 750. I'm just going to circle this to show that I picked four dollars. And similarly, if Jessica picks 450, 800 is bigger than 750. So I'm going to pick four dollars to get 800 instead of 750. So for Jason, his pure strategy is four dollars. Let's do the same analysis for Jessica. Jessica says to herself, well, if Jason's going to pick $4, then I would rather pick $4 because $250 is bigger than $200. And similarly, she says, if Jason is going to pick $450, I would rather pick $4 because $300 is bigger than $250. So from Jessica's point of view, she would rather also pick $4. Whenever you're in a situation like this where um, a player has um, a pure strategy equilibrium, it's going to be true that the convergence of those two dominant uh, I'm sorry, if you're ever in a situation where players have dominant strategies, each one has a dominant strategy, then you're going to find the Nash equilibrium where those two dominant strategies meet, in this case 750 and 250, which is the same thing that we said above.